ಪಕ್ಷ ಸ್ವಪಕ್ಷ ಅಲಿ ಹಾಸ್ಯ of the supreme personality of god in vipaksha enemy eva certainly va o oh, parashya of the supreme mrityu ho in the form of time vishaka entering samam equally praja living entity tam him ಧಾವಮಾನ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ಅನುಧಾವಂತಿ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ಅನಿಶಾಹ ಡಿಪೆಂಡೆಂಟ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಟಿಟಿ ಯಸ್ ರಾಜಾಂಸಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ದ ದಸ್ ಅನಿಲ ದ ವಿನ್ ಭೂತಶಂಗ ಅದ ಮೆಟ್ರಲ್ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ translation the supreme personality of god is in his feature of eternal time is present in the material world and is neutral towards everyone no one is his ally and no one is his enemy within the jurisdiction of the time element everyone enjoys the suffering that is out of his own karma or fruity activities as when the wind blows small particles of dust fly in the air so according to one's particular karma one suffers or enjoys material life please repeat the supreme personality of godhead in his feature of eternal time present in the material world and is neutral towards everyone no one is his ally and no one is his enemy within the jurisdiction of the time element everyone enjoys to suffer the result of his own karma or fruity activities as when the wind blows small particles of dust fly in the air so according to one particular karma one suffers or enjoys material life purport by divine grace ac bhakti vedant swami shri prabhupada although the supreme personality of god it is the original cause of all causes He is not responsible for anyone's material suffering and enjoyment. There is no such partiality on the part of the Supreme Lord. The less intelligent accuse the Supreme Lord of being partial and claim that this is why one enjoys the material world and another suffers. But this verse specifically says that there is no such partiality on the part of the Supreme Lord. living entities however are never independent as soon as they declare their independence of the supreme controller they are immediately put into this material world to try their luck freely as far as possible when the material world is created for such misguided living entities they create their own karma through the vacuity and take advantage of time element and thereby they create their own fortune or misfortune everyone is created everyone is maintained and everyone is ultimately killed 
As far as the three things are con- concerned, the Lord is equal to everyone. It is according to one's karma that one suffers and enjoys the living entity. Higher or lower position is suffering and enjoying it due to his own karma. The exact word used in this connection is anisaha, which means dependent on their own karma. The example is given that the government gives everyone the facility for governmental action and management, but by his own, one's own choice one creates a situation which obliges him to exist under different types of consciousness. The example given in this verse is that when the wind blows, particles of dust float in the air. Gradually lightning occurs and then torrents of rain follow and thus the rainy season creates a situation of varieties in the forest. God is very kind. He gives everyone an equal chance, but the resultant action of one's own karma, one suffers and enjoys this material world. Oma jnana timirandasya jnanam jnana shalaka chakshodam militam yanatas me Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Satvitam Yanabhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamam Didati Swaparandikam Vadeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Cha Shri Rupam Sakajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tamsajim Shadvitam Shavadutam Parajanam Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Param Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishagan Vitam E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchna Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Shwari Prashavanu Sita Devi Pranamami Hare Priya Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Namorom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Pinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Guravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavati Paschadya Desatarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Gadadara Shiva Siddhi Gora Bhakta Gunda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Move here Very good So we are very interesting from Jack here that usually when some calamities happen then everybody is blaming God. Is it not? Some plane crash or some tsunami, yes? Or why God is so unkind, poor children all are killed, yes? Isn't that the, the consciousness? Is it not? They blame it on God. Is it not? Correct? Yes? So this is their natural tendency. But you see in this verse, the Lord is neutral. He is not responsible. Uh, Like a judge, he sits there and if some criminal is coming, he gives him the punishment. And if some uh, dispute is there and somebody wins the case, he gives him millions. But does the judge partakes in the result? Very neutral. Yes? So the Lord is like that. The Lord is not implicated, you know, in this action. You explain here. This is in the Bhagavad Gita. Nadate kasya chit papam, nachaiva sukritam vibhu, agyanena vartam, jnanam, tenam kyanti jantavaha.
nor does the Supreme Lord assume anyone's sinful or pious activity. Embodied beings, however, are bewildered because of ignorance which covers their real knowledge. You see, the Lord is not implicated. Understand, he does not accept someone's pious activity or someone's sinful activity. He's not implicated. He's neutral. Understand? Huh? Because someone who do not know, in ignorance, they are blaming the Lord. Oh, God is so unkind. Innocent children have been killed. Uh, they do not know. Uh, just like here, again, it says, Samaham sarva bhuteshu name divishosti na priyaha na eva janti tummam bhaktya mahite teshu chapiyaham. I envy no one, no, am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. See this point here? So the Lord is not envious of someone or partial to someone? No. But if someone is a devotee of Krishna, then Krishna takes special care. Now before we go to this subject, we have to know what is this karma. This subject today is about sinful activity. Yes? Karmano he api bodhavyam, bodhavyam cha jaya sri radha. Bodhavyam cha vikarmanaha, akarmana cha bodhavyam, gahana karmano kati. This is from the Bhagavad Gita 4.17. The intricacies of action are very hard to understand. Therefore one should know properly what his action is what is forbidden action is, and what is inaction is. That means there are three things. One is karma, one is akarma, and one is vikarma. Three things are there. So what is karma, and what is akarma, and what is vikarma? You understand? Huh? So when we say karma means that you are doing something, uh, generally, you are doing something and you get some piety out of it. It's karma. You understand? Karma punyam. Punya karma, you say. So if that somebody, you know, is doing some uh, rituals and he wants to get the result to be promoted to the heavenly planets. You understand? They want to get promotion to the heavenly planet. That's kind of activities they do. They, you know, may have uh, open an eye hospital or they may plant trees or they may help some poor man like this. You understand? They are trying to amass some piety. You follow? So they can get promoted to where? Heavenly planet. This is called karma, you know. And then what is vikarma? Vikarma means forbidden activities. Activities that you do, then you are subject to sinful activities. And when you do sinful activities, where you go? Huh? You go to hell. Are you following? So, one activity you get, you are going up to heaven, the planet. Another activity you are doing, and then you are going to hell. And in between is inaction. That means you're doing something, neither you're getting promoted to heaven, nor you're going to hell. That means you don't get any reaction. So there are three kinds of action. You follow? Huh? Now, one, those who go to heavenly planet, it is explained here in the Bhagavad Gita, 
chapter 9, text 20. How they go, this is explained here. Those who study the Vedas and drink the Soma juice, seeking the heavenly planet, worship me indirectly. Purify their sinful reaction, they take birth on the pious heavenly planet of Indra, where they enjoy godly delights. See? So they study the Vedas, they do a lot of pious work, you know, punya karma, so they get promoted. You understand? Now, I'll show you another verse. More clearly you can understand. So a person is trying to go If one performs Vedic sacrifice and fruity rituals without any mistake or contamination, one will achieve a heavenly situation in the next life. But even this result which is only achieved by perfect performance of fruity Vedic rituals will be vanquished by time. Now hear of this. So okay, you go there. Let's say you are perfectly doing your ritual and all this uh, karmakanda stuff. Then you go to there. Uh, If on earth one performs sacrifice for the satisfaction of the demigod, he goes to the heavenly planet where, just like a demigod, he enjoys all of the heavenly pleasures he has earned by his performance. You understand? He goes to the heavenly planet. Now, what is wrong in going there? Now, you see, it's a very nice. Everything is very... Having achieved the heavenly planets, the performer of ritualistic sacrifice travels in glowing airplane. Huh? Now your plane, you don't know, can crash. And very uncomfortable also, the seat is all narrow, so many problems. Yes? Right or not? Is it not? Huh? And then the waitress are coming. Coffee sir, tea sir, disturbing you all the time. Yes? Huh? Right? And you cannot move, you are stuck. But this is a growing airplane, you see the difference, which he obtains as the result of his piety on earth. When glorified by the song sung by the Gandharvas and dressed in wonderful, charming clothes, he enjoys life surrounded by heavenly goddesses. Can you imagine this? Huh? He says the heavenly goddesses, the women, uh, their body, you know, like you, you all have bodies, you have bodies, they are very beautiful. And their body, you know, when the weather is hot, their body is cold. And when the weather is cold, their body is hot. Understand, they, they are very, and very fragrant. Now you have to go buy all kind of uh, stuff to put on your body. <laughs> yes, <laughs> body is thinking, but you just, you know, cover it up. Right? But there, their body is fragrant. Understand? Yeah, because they eat the lotus, golden lotus root. You know the stem, golden lotus they have there. When they eat that root, they stay for long life, they don't get disease, their body is very fragrant. You follow? Huh? Then, you see what happens. Accompanied by a heavenly woman, the enjoyer of fruits of sacrifice goes on pleasure rides in a wonderful airplane 
which is decorated with circles of tinkling bells which flies wherever he desires, being relaxed, comfortable and happy in heavenly life, pleasure gardens. He does not consider that he is exhausting the fruits of his piety and will soon fall down to the mortal world. His airplane, no fuel, eh? No need to go and put fuel. You see how this whole thing is so alluring. Understand? But, but, there is a but. Huh? That he does not consider that he is exhausting the fruits of his piety and will soon fall down to the mortal world. That means what? If his time is finished, his piety is finished, he will come down here again. Are you following? Huh? Until his pious results are used up, the performer of sacrifice enjoys life in heavenly planet. When the pious results are exhausted, however he falls down from the pleasure garden to heaven, they move against his desire by the force of eternal time. And the woman there, they, before they fall down the last year, they will have a child, and when the child is, they have uh, given birth to the child, then they will fall down. Understand? They fall down here uh, as rain. From the rain, they fall down to the grain. And then the grain is eaten by the man, I mean the animal, made to milk. Milk is taken by the human. And again, the, seed, the, 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 the spirit soul is put into the womb of a woman. Again, it's time to take birth again. You understand? So, karma doesn't look good. Yes? Yes or no? You, yeah, you are happy, but it's only for short time. Yes? Yes, but actually uh, no real happiness, you know. Even if you go to heaven, you can see here, One cannot find permanent happiness even on the heavenly planets. Not permanent happiness. Which one can attain in the next life by ritualistic ceremony and sacrifice. Even in the material heaven, the living entity is disturbed by rivalry with his equal and envy of those superior to him. And since one's residence in heaven is finished with exhaustion of pious through his activity, the denizens of heaven are afflicted by fear, anticipating the destruction of their heavenly life. Thus they resemble kings who, though enviously admired by ordinary citizens, are constantly harassed by enemy kings, who therefore never attain actual happiness. Uh, it doesn't look uh, good. You see, there is envy, there is rivalry, uh, and there is fear. Because you don't know when your time is going to finish and again you're going to come down. Yes? Yes or no? So karma is not very exciting. You follow? Huh? And very painful. You know, karma is what? You can see here, I'm going to show you some verses, why karma is very painful. Knowledge of self-realization, even though free from all material affinity, does not look well if it devoid of a conception of the infallible God. What then is the use of fruitive activity, means karma, which are naturally painful from the very beginning and transient by nature, if they are not utilized for the devotional service of the Lord? The karma is very painful. 
Karmis are always anxious to accumulate wealth for their sense gratification. This is how the karmis are. Yes? Money, 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 money. You see? But for that purpose they must work very hard. Yes? You go and see what time they go to work. Correct? And to sit there for how many hours? Not less than 10. 10 to 12 hours. Is it not? Huh? The hard work. Yet even though they work hard, the results are not satisfying. Sometimes their work results only in frustration. Is it not? But devotees who have dedicated their lives to the service of the Lord can achieve substantial results without working very hard. These results exceed the devotees' expectation. They are two different worlds. Devotees, what? Why the devotees are not suffering like them? Because they are doing another thing called akarma. Akarma means you are doing service for Krishna and but there is no reaction. There is no. Now if I do karma, I am getting what? The piety, yes? And I am going to heaven, correct? And also there is no real happiness there. Once the ex when I exhaust my piety, again I will fall down to the material world. Correct? Right? Devotees, they are different. You understand? Uh, I will want to explain that. Uh, So therefore, it is not very intelligent to do this kind of karmic work. If you do this karmic work, the result is very, very painful. Huh? You understand? So now, what about sinful work? If I do something which is sinful, what is it? Explain here. And this was, My dear Arjuna, one who does not follow his human life, the cycle of sacrifice thus established by the Vedas, certainly leads a life full of sin. Living only for the satisfaction of senses, such a person lives in vain. In other words, if a person does some action not sanctioned by the scriptures, uh, for example, meat eating is not sanctioned, illicit sack is not sanctioned, gambling is not sanctioned, uh, and intoxication is not sanctioned. So if anyone indulges in these four sinful activities, then he is going to live a life full of sin, living only for the satisfaction of the senses, such a person lives in vain. Uh, what is the result of this? You can see here. The perplexed, thus perplexed by various anxieties and bound by a network of illusion, they become too strongly attached to sense enjoyment and fall down into hell. Now I want to elaborate this a bit more. Huh? Let me show you a bit more. Oh, what happened? 
I want to show you a little bit more, so you will understand this a little bit more clearly. Here, if a human being is engaged in sinful, irreligious activity, uh, irreligion, either because of bad association or because of his failure to control his senses. Two ways you can do sinful work. One is what? Bad association. Like now, if I associate with someone who is a drunkard, what will I do? What will I learn? What I will learn? To drink. Yes. So if I keep bad company, karanam gunasangosya sat asat yoni janmasu. If I associate with sinful people, I will develop sinful habits. Yes? Is it not? Or if I don't control my senses, then my senses will drive me to do sinful work. Yes? Because of his failure to control his sin. Then such a person will certainly develop a personality full of material desires. He thus become miserly towards others. One first quality. He become what? Miserly towards others. What does that miserly towards others mean? Huh? What? He cares for himself only. He is not caring for others. Huh? Have you lived with such a person? Huh? Very painful, is it not? Always look for himself only. He don't care for others. Yes? When the mind and, and greedy, Miserly towards others and is greedy and always anxious to exploit the bodies of women. That is the outside world. Everybody is like that. Yes? Huh? When the mind is so polluted, one becomes violent and aggressive without the authority of Vedic injunction, slaughters innocent animals for sense gratification. You can see. What are they doing outside? Huh? You go to the hawker center in Singapore, a lot of what? What? 90% the shop inside, 100%. What the shop inside? Huh? They're selling from chicken meat to crocodile meat. Yes, frog leg to monkey brain. Mm -hmm. huh? Yes, what they will not eat, these guys. Correct? You see, slaughtering animals. Huh? And then not only that, uh, and you can see, if you go and check their eating, they will eat a little bit and throw the rest away. Have you observed that? They eat a little bit of the meat and the rest of it they throw. A poor animal died for you and you are not even eating food. It is one leg you eat and the four legs you throw away. What kind of nonsense is that? Understand? See? And then worshipping ghosts and spirit, because if you are in the mode of ignorance, you will be if you are sinful, then you will be attracted to what? Not God. You will be attracted to ghosts. See? And uh, the bewildered person falls fully in the grip of unauthorized activities and thus go to hell. Where he receives a material body infected by the darkest mode of nature. In such a degraded body, he unfortunately continues to perform inauspicious activity that greatly increases his future unhappiness. And therefore he again accepts a similar material body. What possible happiness can there be for one who engages in activities inevitably terminating in death? Huh? What? What? Very nice. Very nice. You see how if you don't follow the rules and regulations, huh? you get implicated. And when you get implicated, you go where? Huh? To hell. And you suffer. Huh? And then you come out again suffering. Is it nice business, suffering? Yeah, Prabhu, I like suffering. Uh, suffering gives me a lot of happiness. Is, it, is that a fact? Huh? Is that a fact? So if you do sinful work, the result and action is, well, you can say, I don't believe this now. I don't believe this. Right? You don't believe. You don't believe. 
So how do you make you believe? Have you gone to hospital? Have you seen? Nothing. Everybody is happy lying on the bed. Fanning. Wow, such a nice time. Yes, is it? Is it? Is it? What's going on there? Huh? Some guy is crying, some guy is wailing, someone food is up, someone tail is up. What kind of nonsense? Is it not? Huh? And then not only that, the tubes all over, you cannot. Huh? So much pain, yes? Have you seen? Huh? Have you seen? It? Have you seen children? Some with big, big head, some with very small head. Have you seen? Deformed kids, have you seen them? They are enjoying. They don't even know what they are doing. Correct? Why? All this is because of karma. Yes, actually the children, it is said in the scripture that these children are supposed to take birth as animals. You know, they are supposed to become animals. But the Lord made them human so that we can see and learn. Wow, I don't want to be like this. You understand? Why? Because unless we see, we are not learn. Is it not? Huh? Enjoying. The child is enjoying. The parents are enjoying. Everybody is enjoying that because of this kid with the big, big head. Yes? Uh, have you seen that? Huh? How much suffering? Why you become like this? Because it says here, if you are sinful, understand, if you are sinful, you become animal. Huh? It says here, Made to wander because of his fruity work, karma. The conditioned soul by contact with the mode of goodness takes birth among the sages or demigods. By contact with the mode of passion, he becomes a demon or a human being. And by associating with the mode of ignorance, he takes birth as a ghost or an animal kingdom. Is this fun? Huh? Fun. Very nice. Every time, like now, I change clothes, you know. Now I'm wearing this, right? Next moment, I change to another dress. Fun one, yes? Huh? One moment, I wear the coat of what? Of an ass. Next moment, I wear the coat of a cockroach. Very nice one. Yeah? Is it good business? Good business? Think. Understand? There is a price to pay. You are not in control. How you are in control? According to your action. Whatever you do, you will be judged and you will be given the respective reaction. You understand? So what is the intelligent thing to do? Tell me, what is the intelligent thing to do? To escape all this or to be part of it? What is the intelligent thing to do? Huh? What? To come out of it, yes? Is it not? I don't want to go to heaven and then fall down again. I don't want to go to hell, come back here again. I don't want to. You understand? If you go to heaven, you fall down, yeah, you take birth in the human being. But if you go to hell, you come up, you have to take birth in animal bodies. Again, from animal to animal to animal to animal, you climb how many millions of births before you come back to human life? This is not very, very nice thing. Yes, the best thing is to stop this. The best thing is to what? Stop it all. So that means I must do an action where I got no reaction. You understand? In other words, if I do anything for Krishna, then I don't get the reaction. You follow? Here, you can see here. Hmm? 
work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu or Krishna has to be performed. Otherwise, work curses bondage in the material world. Therefore, o son of Kunti, perform your prescribed duty for his satisfaction and in that way you will always remain free from bondage. Understand? In other words, now I must learn how to do everything for Krishna. How to do this? How to do this? How? That's why Krishna says here, how? He shows. Yat karosi, yat asnasi, yat juhosi, tadasi, yat. Yat apasi, si kaunta, yat. Tat kuru swamar arpanam. What is this? Whatever you do, whatever you eat, Whatever you offer or give away, whatever austerity you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. Uh, how to do eating? How, how to do that? Huh? Therefore, you cook very nice food, right? And you offer to Krishna. And after you offer, you can take and eat as much as you like. You see, a simple example. The devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sin because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily eat only sin. So you understand now? Okay, I am going to eat. If I eat, because the food has got soul also, plant also got life, is it not? Plants are what? Data. They have life, is it not? So when you take something which is living, you are going to be implicated in killing. Yes or no? Yes, you done. But if you offer them to Krishna, huh, then you get free. Oh, in that case, I cannot offer some chicken, egg and fish. If I offer Krishna some chicken, fish and egg, that's all right. Yes? Yes? I get free, is it not? No, you cannot do that. Why? Because Krishna is saying here what he likes. He likes food in this category. You know? He says here, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yomi Bhakta Priyachate Tadaham Bhakta Uparitam Asnami Priyatatmanaha The one offers me with love and devotion and leave flower, fruit or water I will accept. So Krishna is not asking for chicken, Krishna is not asking for what? Fish, meat, egg, no. So you got to offer him what he likes. And then if you take the remnants, then you get free. That is about eating. What about work? Everybody is working. How to get the work purified? How do you get purified the work? How? Huh? You got to offer the result of the work to Krishna. Like you are working hard and getting money, correct? You offer a certain portion of that to the Lord. Huh? 50% offering to the Lord. 50% you keep. Then you are free from the reaction. You follow? Huh? Everything has to be done with the Lord in the center. So if we do activities in that way, then we will become free from all our reaction. In fact, we also will become free from all our previous action. Okay, by taking up this process,
He who knows me as unborn, as the beginningless, as the supreme Lord of all the world, he only, undelivered of my man, is free from all sin. In other words, if you just go and understand Krishna as all in all, you get free from all sin. You understand? And if you surrender to Him, if you surrender to Him, He takes away all the sinful activities, abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto Me, I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions, do not fear. Again, if you go to Him, because we do not know previous life we have done so much, yes, we don't know. Yes? So by going to Krishna, all our sins are free and we go home, back to Godhead. You know, again, in other words, Only a rare person who has adopted complete unalloyed devotional service to Krishna can uproot the weeds of sinful action with no possibility they will revive. He can do this simply by discharging devotional service just as the sun can immediately dissipate for by grace. You understand? So our not only we are talking about future sin, we are talking about past sin. Correct? So if you take up this process of Krishna Consciousness, all the sinful activities that you have done previously, uh, they all become nullified. Understand? And what happens? What happens if we get all nullified? What happens? It says here, just by taking up this process of Krishna Consciousness and performing this akarma, One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activity does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in this material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. So, a person who takes up Krishna consciousness, he going to another place. What is that place? Huh? What is that place? He is going to Krishna's place, eternal abode. What is this eternal abode? Huh? What is this eternal abode? This eternal abode is explained here. The supreme abode of mind is not illumined by sun or moon or fire or electricity. Those who reach it never return to this material world. That means this place of the law, eternal accord, is a place where you go, you don't come back again. You follow? Huh? Whereas you go to the heavenly planet, when your piety is finished, you have to fall down again. Yes? No deal. Or if you go to the hellish planet, you finish your suffering, you come back again. You understand? But now if you perform devotional service to Krishna, you are going back to the spiritual world and never to return again. Understand? So that means if you take up this process of devotional service, uh, beginning with chanting Krishna's name, uh, once you start chanting Krishna's name, uh, how much volumes of sinful activities are eradicated? Uh, you know, you can see here, I think it's six. Six one two, I think. Let me see. Let's see this verse. Huh?
See here in this verse, Ajamil has already atoned for all his sinful actions. Indeed, he has atoned not only for sin performed in one life, but for both performed in millions of lives. For in a helpless condition, he chanted the holy name of Narayana. Even though he did not chant purely, he chanted without offense, and therefore he is now pure and eligible for liberation. You understand? Just by chanting the name of Krishna, he says here in this verse, Namno he yavati shakti papa niharane hare he tavat kartum na shaknoti patakam pataki naraha. Simply by chanting one holy name of Hari, a sinful man can counteract the reaction to more sin than he is able to commit. Try to understand what you are doing now. If you do karma, you are going to get. Uh, Piety to go to the heavenly planet to enjoy and then when it's finished you fall down again, correct? When you do sinful activities because of bad association or failing to control the senses, you go to hell, suffer and then you come back here again, correct? But here, simply by chanting Krishna's name, one is counteract the reaction to more sins that he is able to commit. And how powerful you will, how much purified you will become by Chanting the name of Krishna. Yes? Yes or no? Huh? If one chants the holy name of the Lord even in a helpless condition or without desiring to do so, all the reaction of his sinful life departs. Just like when a lion roars, all the small animals flee in fear. You understand? Just by you chanting Krishna's name, and this is considered a akarma activity. You are doing something where you are cleaning up all your bad reaction and good reaction and everything is getting cleaned up. You understand? And you are going to the supreme abode. Huh? The one by one chanting the holy name of the Lord which consists of two syllables, Hari. One guarantees his path to liberation. Understand liberation? Huh? So therefore, if we are really intelligent, we will try to do some activity whereby we get purified, correct? And we don't incur any more sins, yes? And we make this body final, no more coming back again. Yes? Is that an intelligent thing to do? That is the most intelligent thing to do. You understand? Not that you do something where you are implicated again and again and again, taking birth and dying and taking birth and dying. That is, that means you are not very intelligent. Not very intelligent. You follow? Huh? Anyone who is not intelligent, uh, they are doing an action whereby they are becoming implicated again and again. See? See here, when a person considers sense gratification the aim of life, he suddenly becomes mad after materialistic living and engage in all kinds of sinful activity. He does not know that due to his past misdeeds, he already received a body which, although temporary, is the curse of his misery. Actually, the living entity should not have taken a material body. 
but he has been awarded the material body for sense gratification. Therefore, I think it is not befitting an intelligent man to involve himself again in the activities of sense gratification by which he perpetually gets material body one after another. So that's not a very intelligent thing to do. Huh? Yes? So if you're going to engage in sense gratification and take birth and die and take birth and die, you know, so you never know what birth you're going to take next life. Yes? Is it not? So it's better to put a stop to this. And therefore, Krishna says that those who come to me, huh, they will never come back again to this material world. Once they go to the spiritual world, they don't return to this temporary material world. No one will come back. In fact, Krishna is saying here, again he says, uh, those people who are intelligent, this intelligent person, he says here, after attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world which is full of misery because they have attained the highest perfection. So anyone who is intelligent will take up this program whereby he will not get implicated again and again. It is a crazy business trying to get yourself what? Taking birth, dying, like here you can see. Huh? Covered by mode of ignorance in the material nature, the living entity is sometimes male, sometimes female, sometimes human, sometimes human being, sometimes demigod, sometimes bird and animal and so on. In this way he is wandering within the material world. His acceptance of different types of body is brought by his activities under the influence of most of nature. So this is going on perpetually. Going on. You know, how many times we have died and how many times we have taken birth? Huh? How many times? Huh? You, do you know? Millions of times we have died. So it is very painful, this birth, death, old age, disease, all is all pain. So why we should live in this painful situation and cage in this body? We should try to come out of it. And the only way to come out is to take shelter of the Lord. You understand? Just by taking shelter of the Lord, huh? simply by chanting Krishna's name, huh? everything is settled. Everything is settled. The Supreme Personality of God is so kind to the conditioned soul that if they call upon Him by speaking His holy name, even unintentionally, unwilling, unwillingly, the Lord is inclined to destroy innumerable sinful reactions in their heart. Therefore, when a devotee who has taken shelter of the Lord's lotus feet, chant the holy name of Krishna with genuine love, the Lord can never give up the heart of such a devotee. One who has thus bound the Supreme Lord within his heart with the ropes of love is to be known as Bhagavad Gita, the most exalted devotee of the Lord. But this is the best thing to do. What is the best thing to do? Huh? Associate with devotees, correct? Huh? Try to give up our material attachment, engagement. Huh? This is what we should be doing. Kindly tell me, O sinless one, One should learn how to associate with the devotees of the Lord by gathering with them to chant the glories of the Lord. Just like this morning you came. Huh? Is it a big difference? No difference. Huh? You feel something? Nothing. What? Huh? See, when you associate with devotees, you learn. Yes. Not only you, you are chanting, the process is most purifying. You do not know how much sins have been gone. 
Understand? Huh? As the bodies develop their loving friendship, they feel mutual happiness and satisfaction. And by thus encouraging one another, they are able to give up material sense gratification, which is the cause of all suffering. You understand? Then our desires will change. We will start thinking uh, uh, more positively to serve the Lord. You know, our eyes like to see beautiful things, but we will tend to see the beautiful form of the Lord. Yes, we like to taste very nice things, then we will taste prasadam. Uh, yes, everything is transformed. Then our life will become what? What? Happy. Understand, only when you come to Krishna Consciousness, you can become happy. You cannot become happy uh, in any other way. That's not possible. It is explained here, and this verse you can see. O learned Uddhava, those who fix their consciousness in me, giving up all material desires, share with me a happiness that cannot possibly be experienced by those engaged in self gratification. The happiness you get by serving Krishna, you cannot imagine. Understand? It is not the same as going out and enjoying the senses. One who does not desire anything within this world, who has achieved peace by controlling his senses, whose consciousness is equal in all conditions, and whose mind is completely satisfied in me, finds only happiness wherever he goes. You cannot become happy otherwise. You can try, no? nobody is saying. Ah, this material world is full of unhappiness. Dukhalyam asasu. But if you take up the process of Krishna consciousness, you are free from karma, you are free from uh, vikarma, you are engaging lovingly with Krishna, and Krishna in the time of death, He will take you back to the spiritual world and you don't have to suffer anymore. Finish. Everything is what? Finish. But if you don't take up the process, then question mark. Yes? Yes? Let's say you are very pious, you do so many piety, go to heaven, but you cannot stay there permanently. Again you return. Yes? Huh? But if you take up a devotional service, whatever you want you will get. Huh? Whatever you want. You see, Krishna is so kind. Everything that can be achieved by fruitive activities, balance, knowledge, detachment, mystery yoga, charity, religious duty, and all other means of perfecting life, easily achieved by my devotee through loving service. If somehow or other my devotee desires promotion to heaven, liberation, or residence in my abode, he easily achieves such benefits. Just by opening the mouth and saying, What? What? Hare Krishna. That's all. Everything he gets. Yeah? But the devotees, they are not interested. They don't want all these things. They don't want to go to heaven. What for? Huh? Because my devotees possess saintly behavior and deep intelligence, they completely dedicate themselves to me, do not desire anything beside me. Indeed, even if I offer them liberation from birth and death, they do not accept it. They don't want, they just want to be with the Lord. Understand? So this is the purification of the heart. Now we all are contaminated, we want to enjoy, we got money, we want to what? That's all it is for, all the material education, what is it about? Oh, study hard, study hard, you get your crazy degree and then you have to work hard like an ass. Yes? And then you get the money, what do you want to do? Oh, you want to buy all the branded stuff? Yes? Gucci bag, you know what that? <laughs> well, you have so many stuff. <laughs> yes, Anna? Correct. After you bought that, then they bring another one. Oh, I want to buy that one. Yes? Then they get this. Oh, maybe I want to get that. But you're never happy. You are never happy. Yes? Material things cannot make you happy. 
Only Krishna can give you complete satisfaction. So I think it is not intelligent to waste our time in this material life. Whereby perpetually we will get material body one after another. Better to put an end to it and go home back to the spiritual world. Alright, any questions? Understand? You understood? Questions? Any questions? No questions? I don't know. We'll stop here then.